Welcome to educate.com. In this video, we will have the basic insight of Enterprise Java Beans. Before we put ourselves into questions such as what are EGBs, why do we use them, how do we use them, and so on and so forth, let us brush over the knowledge we have of RMI, which forms the basic technology on which the EJBs were developed. RMI expands to remote method invocation. In the scenario of distributed systems, when we need to invoke methods on a remotely located JVM, we use the RMI technology. But the effect is just the same, as if it were a function call local to our machine. Here is a typical example where we are sending two parameters, say 1 and 2, to a remote machine which calculates their sum and sends us the result 3. Though we might actually think that we are invoking calls on our own machine, this is the actual scene unknown to us. RMI technology establishes two objects for you. On the client side, it is called the stub and on the service side, it is called the skeleton. Why do we need them? Let us see. As per the previous example, if you had to send two arguments, one and two, to the remote machine, how would you do that? If it were passing arguments to the same JVM, we would have passed the values by reference. But would it make sense to send references of one memory heap to another machine? Absolutely no. So, the solution lies in serializing our parameters. Once we have serialized objects, we pass them over the network and deserialize it on the destination machine. Our stub and skeleton basically do that serialization and deserialization work for us. We have just seen how the client and the server communicate. But how do they physically connect to each other? The client stub would obviously know the IP address of the server. True? But what if there are several applications on that server while we need to get connected to a particular application's skeleton? This is precisely why RMI uses the concept of binding its skeleton object with a registry under a unique name. That is when the client can directly look up for the skeleton object in the registry with that unique name and get the reference to the skeleton. Thereby, a stub is created on the client's machine to talk to the skeleton. This is how we handle remote method invocations. We learned quite a bit of RMI to start off with the EGBs. So, what is the EGB technology? EGBs are the J2EE specification. They mean much more than our plain old Java objects or the POJOs. In the sense that EGBs hold your business logic also. Though it is actually possible to use standard Java objects to contain your business logic and business data, the world is talking about the usage of EGBs because they address many of the issues you would find due to the usage of simple Java objects such as scalability, lifecycle management and state management. EGBs provide a distributed, object-oriented, component-based architecture. We said it is distributed because you communicate across remotely connected JVMs. We said it is object-oriented because it's all about dealing with more than primitives. We deal with real-time objects. We said it is component-based because it's a plug-in and plug-out concept. If you have written an employee bean and need a department bean, just pick it up from somewhere and plug it into your application. So, why did we actually talk all about RMI? It's primarily because EJPs are built on RMIs. Both technologies help us achieve the same functionality of working on a remote JVM. But, as we can see in this picture, the EJP technology comes up with additional services which the server would cater for you. The developer only writes the beans and business logic, while the EJP container takes care of the underlying services. We will learn more about the services and their importance in time. 
थैंक यू